Okay, so. Interesting week for us, huh? Last week's message was um, revelatory, but it was also very instructive. Very, very simple, practical application stuff. So I just want to, before I go forward, I just want to just pick apart that one point from last week that was, I think, a foundation or the new point, and let's go forward from there. Verse 9, the meek he will guide in judgment, the meek he will teach his ways. Psalm 25, I'm sorry, Psalm 25. You there? Amen. Or the paths of the Lord, verse 10. Or the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. And to such who keep his covenant. We went through covenant in detail. And his testimonies. For thy namesake, O Lord, pardon my iniquities. For your namesake, not for mine. For your namesake. Um, I'm going to talk about that a tiny bit. So I'm going to come back to that. For it is great. What man is it that feareth the Lord? We went through that in detail. Him he will teach in the way that he shall choose. Um, when he says, God, show mercy and love and kindness, you're listening? Mm -hmm. For your namesake. How many people have kids? Those are your namesake. Yeah, yeah, you're catching it? You know? What's Rachel's last name? What's Mitchell's last name? What's Mikey's last name? That's your namesake. They have your last name. So he's saying show mercy and kindness for your namesake. He's identifying himself as God's child, having his name, sharing his namesake. Shondo. <laughs> I like that, though. You got it? So, so even there, he's identifying we are your namesake. Yes. We are your offspring. Yes. We are your children. Yes. So show us mercy and loving and kindness, not as people who follow you or people who are part of your religion, but because we are your descendant, we are your namesake. Yes. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Simple stuff like that can go right over our heads, but it's there. Him he shall teach in the, the way that he shall choose, right? What man, verse 12, fear of the Lord? Him he shall teach the way he so choose. Now, I'm just going to touch on that a little bit again because that's a very strong foundation. It said he would teach him the way he should choose. We went over that last week in deep detail. What did I say choosing was? And we went through the Hebrew definition and everything. Remember? To choose? Yeah. One option. It said a lot of Christians, they don't choose. They want the God of selection. And some of you looked at me like I was crazy. Isn't selection and choose the same thing? No, it's absolutely not. Some the women in the house and some men have a selection of shoes. Jeff has a selection. He has colors to match every shirt that he wears. Yes, he does. That's a selection. He can change shoes all throughout the day. But when you make a choice of something, if I choose a wife, even though people do it like shoes now, you're not supposed to switch them out every few years when you get tired of them. You're supposed to trust the Lord and his will. Ah, come on now. And you're supposed to work it out, and it's covenant, and you stay together. It's a choice. It's not a selection. Get a few amen. It's good. I'll take those. I'll take those. Take the despairing, but I'll take them. So... <laughs> My point is, the choice to, to follow God should leave no option for anything else. So when he says he'll lead you in a way to choose, I don't want God to give me selections. I want him to give me the choice. Haven't you prayed that in your, in your toughest times? Yes? No? God, just tell me what to do, Lord. Whatever you tell me, Lord, I do whatever you say. This time. Well, you don't add that, but that's what you mean. 
until I disobey again. I promise I'll never do it again until I do it again. Now, here's the point. Say, say this with me if you agree. I'll say it first, and if you agree, say it. Lord, I want to make right choices. Now, he leads you in the choices. It's powerful because most of my life, let me just say most of my Christian life even, I made selections and then prayed for God to bless it. I finally got to a place that I said, you know something, and you've heard me say it before, I came to this great revelation, pain hurts. I don't like pain, I don't like suffering, and I don't like going through. So I would rather say, God, tell me what to choose so that I do it right the first time. Now that requires something of you, though. It requires a commitment. It requires what we covered earlier, a covenant heart. If I commit to do something for you, I need to do it from the place of covenant, not the place of convenience. Who would like me to explain that a little bit? All right, then, I will. If God tells me to look out for you, I'll look out for you even if you're annoying. (laughs) Because God told me to look out for you. So it's not about how I feel. It's not about how the situations go, whether they go my way or not my way, whether you appreciate it and say thank you or never say thank you. I made a covenant with God to look out for you, so I'm going to do that. Hmm. Taking that with the regular fleshly human account of things, we do things for people as long as we get out of it what we perceive we should get, even if it's gratitude. So I'll I'll give you a small example so I don't get too deep. So I'll give an example that I know hits everybody. How's that? I'll give a universal example. How many of you have ever opened, held the door open for somebody and they walked right past you and then say thank you? (laughs) Did you get pissed a little bit? then your holding the door wasn't from the heart of being a blessing. You helped the door because you wanted gratitude and you wanted to thank you from the person. Your heart in that matter wasn't genuine. If I hold the door because I just want to hold the door and you walk through and you don't say anything, it doesn't affect me. I didn't hold the door for your acknowledgement. I hold the door because I was coming out the door and I saw you coming. I just thought it was the right thing to do. And I don't say, you're welcome. (laughs) So you did it for the praise of man. You didn't do it by the spirit of God or with the right spirit. So there are people here that will come to me and say, thank you, Pastor. You've been a blessing to my life and you changed my life. And some of you walk right past me like, that's your job. That's what you're supposed to do. And, 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 and I'm fine with either one. I'm fine with either one because I am doing my job. That's my job. And the reward I get from God way supersedes anything you can give me. That's why when you try to compliment me too much, I shut it down. I don't like it. Because I know you're probably trying to set me up for something. I don't like a lot of compliments. Just keep all that crap. I can't use it. Listen, I'm from the street. Somebody compliments you too much, you got to watch your back. They're going to set you up. I don't trust nobody that compliment me too much. Nobody. I don't like it. Off of that, though. So now, he will lead you in the way that you should choose. When you choose, you choose right the first time. Then you have to keep saying, God allowed me to go through that. He allowed you to go through your choice. And he will. Now, this was the verse that we left off at. Verse 13. First of all, let's go back to 12 because you got to read these together to really make it work. What man is it that reverences or honors the Lord? We looked up the word fear and we saw it was not 
not, you know, intimidation and, 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 and terror, but honors and reverences the Lord. Him he will teach in the way that he shall choose. Don't ever forget that. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. Now, we went through the word ease. How many of you remember that? A lot of you don't. So let's do it again. So, wait a minute, how many of you fear of the Lord? Honor, reverence the Lord? Can I see a hand? You fear, you ever honor the Lord? Okay, so this is going to be the proof if you do or not. One, he directs you in the way you should choose. If you're not being directed, maybe you're not reverencing as much as you should. You need to check your reverence meter. Now, number one. Two, he will teach him in the, uh, I mean, two, his soul shall dwell in ease. So let's go to ease again. Say this for, before I go to the definition. Ready? Lord, Lord teach, me to fear you teach me to fear you so that you can lead me so and my choices. And I accept today I accept that my soul should dwell at ease and nothing but ease. Now, let, now, we got the word on this, right? So we're going to hold God to his word and he's going to hold us to ours, okay? So let's see what the word ease means. And I broke it down from the, from the, from the full explanation of the word in the Hebrew to the, def, the separate definitions. This is one verse of scripture and one promise from God. Just one that if you never read anything else in the Bible should set your life up okay. Mike, you're already looking, right? It's an objective. In the wildest sense, used likewise as a noun, both in the masculine and the feminine. That's important if you understand Latin. If you don't, it doesn't make sense. And, and so I'll give you a, a brief understanding now that I'm studying Spanish. Um, they, are la, they are masculine and, and feminine, el and la. And you have to use those in their right tenses. So you can tell what somebody's talking about, even if they never say he or she, just by the la or the el. And, and then you say um, words, like words that I would consider like nouns, that what you put on the end of them, like, um, bonito, bonita. So if somebody's, you're saying a guy is nice looking or pretty, is bonito, bonito, bonito. But the, 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 well, in, in, in what I'm studying, they, they have bonito and bonita. Right? All right? So you know it's a girl or a guy. You can say pretty and only say pretty, but based on the I, you know it's a pretty girl, not a pretty guy. That simple. So when they say it works in the masculine and feminine, he's saying no matter if you put an L or a La, it applies. All right? Everybody's included in this. Singular or plural. So you or your family, you, one of you or all of you. A good thing. A good man or woman. The good or goods or good things of men and women. Also an adverb, ready? It said your soul should dwell at ease. Beautiful, best, better, bountiful, cheerful, at ease, fair, to be in favor, fine, glad, good, gracious, joyful, kindly, Kindness, like, loving, merry, most pleasant, pleasant pleasure, precious, prosperity, ready, sweet, wealth, welfare, well favored. <sighs> Hold up. So he said, if you just let God lead your life and he gives you the direction you, direction you should choose, all of that comes with that package. Stay with me now, because most of you don't have half of this. 
So where did the church get up saying you got to go through hell in order for God to teach you something? Where this clearly says, let God give you, guide you in your choices. And the benefit of that is all we just read. If I just take the end of it, gracious, joyful, kindly, kindness. This is the way people will treat you. Loving, merry, most, pleasant, pleasure, precious, prosperity, ready, wealth. So much for the God wants you poor. And welfare, meaning well taken care of, faring well in life. Somebody say, this is my promise promise. from God. God. I refuse refuse. anything less. That's your promise. That's your promise. That's God. Hold up. We went through the whole covenant thing. He keeps covenant for a thousand generations. God don't write stuff like this and go, yeah, but for you, I just want you to go through hell and hard times because I don't, I want to see what you're going to do. He doesn't change his word. If you look up the root words of most of the stuff we talk about, you'll find out that God is a God of prosperity. Now, I want to really put this on the record because I don't usually use the word prosperity a lot in messages or in preaching. And the reason I don't use the word prosperity is because of what the church has done with it. The church has done a horrible thing with the word prosperity. Right. They turned the whole thing into bring this, sow a special seed, and it all becomes about earthly blessings and money as if that's the key to peace in God. How many things you have. I got a my box, so therefore I'm very blessed. I said, I know a bunch of heathens that have those, so who are they? Okay, it's not anti-material blessings, but being prosperous is not money. Money is an offshoot, but it's not money. Because if you hit the lotto tomorrow and your body is dying from some inoperable tumor, that money doesn't change that. I hate to throw this up as, as a point, But it's sad that a company that's worth more than most third world countries found or died from a cancer that they could not operate on or cure. And he had more money than anybody, period. And it couldn't save him. That's not prosperity. That's a bunch of stuff. At the end of his life, his last days were spent in a bed with somebody probably having to change him. So please don't try to tell me that prosperity is about how much material goods you have, because that's not the case. Material goods are a promise. We just read the word wealth. But. What good is it for a man to gain the world and lose his soul, the scripture says. The, 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 the things that make you and me prosperous is not the things we have, it's who we have and what we've become because of who we have. And then he said, you seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added. But here's the thing. When you seek the kingdom of God first, or oh, listen to what I'm saying today, and the things are added they don't affect you or change you because you go, yeah, well, daddy takes care of me. It's no big deal. My kids never woke up and said, oh, my God, you're feeding us today. Oh, praise you, Father. Daddy takes care of us. That's what he does. That's what he does. They never went in the bathroom and expected toilet paper not to be there. They didn't think that was a privilege and an honor from the throne. At the throne. <laughs> that, they expected that. No, you don't go to the bathroom, there's no toothpaste. Where's the toothpaste? And, and they will come and say, uh, you got some more toothpaste? They know, like, they'll go look in that storage closet, that, 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 wherever you kept your extra toothpaste and stuff. Because there's some in here somewhere. 
Right? They prospered in that. They expected that. But they didn't judge whether I loved them or not loved them or whether they were kept or not kept based on the toothpaste and the toilet paper supply. They were blessed because they were my kids and they knew I provided. The most prosperous thing you can have and the best prosperity you can have in life is that relationship and covenant with God where you know God and you know that you are known by God and there's no question in your mind about it. Some of you are going to catch that later. There's, there's no better grace and peace and joy in my life. And God has blessed me with things. But there's no better peace in my life to know that I am his. He is mine. We have a covenant. And if I call on him, he's there. But it doesn't stop there. But it doesn't stop there but it doesn't stop there. And, I, and more important, I need to know that God knows that if he calls me, I'm there. Yeah. Yeah. More important. I need to feel that God feels that I'm his dude, that he can trust me, that despite emotions and feelings and, and hardships and anything else that people may put on me, he can depend on me to do what he calls me to do. Amen. And if you're not there yet, that's a good, that's a good goal. Because if God dep can depend on you, he will unload on you. Oh, my goodness. That scripture says, much is required to whom as much is given. People say, yeah, you got to work really hard. No, he's not talking about much work. He's talking about much surrender. I need more of you if you want more of me. I'm kind of in a somber mood today, but not in a sad mood. I just really feel this need to, like, say, get this. Get this. Like, this is serious. It's as good as we rejoice and shout, but so much of the church is dying because they just keep missing this simple as revelation. God wants you blessed. He calls you blessed. He's named you blessed. You are blessed by the virtue of the fact that he said it. And if we keep pursuing blessings instead of the blesser, we never get the fullness of the blessings. Don't pursue the stuff. Don't pursue the stuff. Don't worship the created thing over the creator. If you hear my heart today, the seriousness of my heart, your life will change forever. My life is unbelievable right now. Unbelievable. And it's not about the things. It's about the revelations that have opened my spirit, my heart up to being closer to God and understanding things that have gotten past me my whole life as I try to guide God where to bless me instead of letting him guide me in the path that I should choose. Yeah. You can give him that. That's a good place. <sighs> so. And his soul will should dwell at ease and his seed will inherit the earth. That's not just your children. That's the stuff that you do and the things that you do with him in his guidance. Ready? I showed you this all in the New Testament. Now I'm showing you it in Mark 4.11. Now I'm showing you it in, 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 in Psalms 25.14. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. The secret of the Lord are with those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant. We all acknowledge that we are those people who reverence the Lord. The secret of the Lord are with those who fear him, and them he will show his covenant. So when I hear these non 
covenant ministers, preachers, teachers that have no covenant, no real relationship with God outside of the religion. Oh, I know this may be sound a little pious for me to say this, whatever, do whatever you want with it. I don't apologize for being me. Here's the fact. Every time they've said and taught you and you said the Lord works in mysterious ways, it's because you're not a covenant person. You don't have a relationship with God because he just said here again, which I showed you in Matthew, that he shows his secrets to those who are in covenant with him. And why would he do it any other way? You don't go and tell your private business to people you don't trust. There is covenant has levels. You, are you with me? Yes. Covenant, are you with me? Yes. Mike, me and you are cool. Shell, I'm just picking the guys. Me and you are cool. We talk. Jeff and me are really cool. Man, I'm talking men. Man talk. Jermaine and I, we cool. But there's a covenant that you have with your wife that I don't get a piece of that. I don't get to know that. I don't get to have that. I didn't make the investment in you in that way to have that relationship. That's between you and your spouse. That's a covenant relationship that nobody else has a right to. You got me? The level of covenant between you and God is spousal. That's why he says, my bride. That's why he uses that term. And the two shall become one flesh. People miss that in the marriage covenant. They, they, people are so shallow with it. Who gets to control who? Wife, submit to your husband. <clears throat> no, I ain't. And they miss this thing. He's showing you the church. He said right here, it's being shown. Wife, submit to your husband's. As, a, to the, as the head, meaning in the way you should choose. I'm not talking natural man right now. I know some men are idiots. I get it. But that's not the conversation. And husbands, lay down your lives for your wife. He calls us his bride. What did he do? Why? That his bride would have the best of the pick. That his bride would be safe for eternity. He did what needed to be done to make sure that the bride was well taken care of after his death. You're not listening to me. Yeah. That's a covenant. I've done everything I know to do with my limited earthly ability to know that if I die tomorrow, Mrs. Brown is going to be fine. She won't have to go get a job. She'll be fine if she treat the money right. She go get some young man and let him mess up her money, then she might have to get <laughs> <laughs> Stay single, you'd be better. I'm just, I'm just playing. You can, you can do what you want when I'm gone. <laughs> so, right, make sure he got, make sure he even got more than me. That's what I'm saying. I come and horn all of y'all. <laughs> so, 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 I just want to lighten up the moment a little bit. But are you getting what I'm saying? That's the contract of the covenant. Surrender to me, let me guide you as the head, and I'll lay down my life for you so that you're well taken care of. So when he says he will guide you to ease, people say, no, you got to go through things with the Lord. Yeah, whatever. Take my yoke upon you. This is Jesus. I don't care what church folks say. I'm telling you what Jesus say. Screw church folk and their beliefs. This is what Jesus says. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is, what did we just learn about ease? Get it? Get it? 
pleasant, plentiful, wealthy, successful, good, all that stuff. Take my yoke and learn to me, for my yoke is ease. Whew! You're getting it now, right? Isn't it nice to have a pastor that study and know some stuff? <laughs> Listen, so that covenant is shown to those, those secrets are revealed to me when I not just become a Christian, but then I surrender myself and humble myself, become meek, and let him lead me in my choices. I can't beat this in enough. Say, Lord, Lord lead, me lead me in my choices. In my choices. I, surrender to that. I surrender to that. He reveals his secrets to those he trusts who committed to follow his instruction. I want to move past this, but this something won't let me go. I'm going to talk about myself, and you know I'm talking about you too, but I'm just going to act like I'm only talking about me. I spend most of my Christian walk picking where I would surrender. I even was stubborn against God by using his scriptures against him. I'm going to give you an example. None of you did this, but I did, so I'll give you an example. God would tell me to forgive somebody who wronged me, and I would say to God, you said how often should I forgive those who ask for it? 70 times 7. They had asked for forgiveness, therefore, I see I have some takers. So I would try to reason God into doing what I want to do. Or you have these people who are bitter and angry, and then they'll try to say it's a righteous anger. No, that's a fleshly anger. Ain't nothing righteous about that. That's all coming out of your emotion. That ain't you being displeased, because a righteous anger is not bitter and hostile. If it was, everybody would be dead right now. No. And not only that, where do we have the right to make that call? Judge not, Matthew 7, 1, that you be not judged. For the same measure you measure will be measured to you again. So what gives us the right to think that we can have the righteous anger towards somebody? You don't have to listen to any of this. This is just where I am in life. I'm just, just putting it like that. You know, take what you like and throw out what you do like you've been doing and keep having the results that you're having. Works fine for me. So based on verse 14, I think I have a right to ask you to say this. God wants me, God wants me. to know his secrets. The Lord does not work in mysterious ways with me. But he does sometimes, yeah, with you, because that's what you believe. And according to your faith, be it unto you. And if you believe you got to go through hell to learn lessons, you will, according to your faith, be it unto you. You will reap hell. The devil will come in and make sure you have all the hell you need. And sometime, God will have to let you walk through it that way because you've chosen that that's the way you have to learn. You've chosen to learn through hardship. Am I speaking to somebody? You know I'm telling the truth. You've chosen that when God does come through, he comes through with barely enough for you to get by until you find yourself in that hole again. You've chose that. 
I'm not saying you intentionally did, but rather through wrong teaching, rather through your, and even through wrong teaching, it still falls on you because you're supposed to study to show yourself approved. It doesn't say listen to pastor to show yourself approved. I know what I know from my study. I'm supposed to stand up here and teach you and give you direction, and then you're supposed to go like the Bereans, and you're supposed to search to see if the things that I say are true. Who's the Berean? Right, that's my point. You haven't read. They're in the book of Corinthians. Look them up. My point is, these were people who they went whenever they got a word and they looked it up to see if what, the, what Paul was preaching was accurate according to the Bible. Why are he preaching? It just made me feel so good. Yeah, wait till you get home and you get that call from that bill collector. Since we want to go off of feelings. It's not about feelings. It's about truth. You can see I'm on a little more serious tip today. I'm still trying to throw a few little humor in there to keep it light. But I want you to understand that this section right here from verse 8 to verse 14 is like a cornerstone of your seed protection. It's like this, this is... From verse 1 all the way down to here, but from, from 8 on, this, this is like the turning point. Meekness, correct judgment. We went through that. Judgment is not going to jail. It's making right choices. And then he says, in judgment, if you reverently fear the Lord, he will direct you in your judgment. He will teach you to choose. And then he will lead you in the, in, into the path of ease. This is it. Learn of me, for my yoke is easy. My burdens are light. This is the Lord's call for your life. I can't preach that on you. Hmm, no, you, you, you didn't hear me. Because a lot of spiritual prostitutes and pimps, they get up there and they prostitute this gospel. And they say to you, and I, I'm getting a lead into my heart. Uh, yes, I'm seeing the number five. Uh, there's five people that have a thousand dollars. Yes. Uh, blah, 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 blah. And they're going to come. Uh, and the Lord told me to tell you, uh, if that's you. Uh, ha, ha, right? And, <laughs> right? And this whole little game. To try to sell what this word says is yours for free if you just let him lead you in your choices. So now it's become this thing. Oh, so it depends on how much money I got. So all of y'all that don't have 5,000, this blessing ain't for y'all. This is for the 5,000 offerings. Now I got another blessing for the $1,000 offerings. I'm going to announce that in a minute. But this one here, right? Come on, man. And the church is just eating it up. Why? Because they don't want to search it out for themselves and, watch this, surrender themselves to covenant. And I would rather pay God some money and just get it. Hmm. 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 I want a shortcut. It breaks my heart. Breaks my heart. How many times I have to minister to people going around that same mountain again and again and again. One disappointment and discouragement after another. And I don't know what to do. (laughs) And I don't know what to do. And I'm like, none of that's going to change anything. You feeling pitiful and sorry. You trying to get God now to move out of guilt. It's not going to happen. How many years you going to cry before you realize that God is not moved by guilt? He's moved by faith. And you can't have faith. In, well, I have faith. No, you have faith in what you've decided to have faith in. That's not having faith in God. You're having faith in your faith. And God is not responsible to respond to that. He supports what he authorizes. He does not have to respond to what you choose to strongly believe.
How do I know so much? Because I was an idiot once like you. I know. I just got tired of falling on my face. I got tired of God having to pick me up from the same place and set me back up only to find myself in the next pit over. I said, God, a revelation just hit me, and flesh and blood didn't reveal it to me. You could do so much more with me if I wasn't constantly needing to be rescued. I believe God's a delivering God. Again? Again? What do you got to deliver you from now? Can't you just be delivered? Once and for all? And then get to the business of delivering and showing other people how to be delivered? Can't we just get delivered once? How many times does the Lord have to make you free and free indeed? So I decided I want to stop making choices based on my own emotions and feelings. And I wanted him to make the choices and show me how to make the right choices. And there's times God will do this, and he will. He'll say, you got this? You got this. And then he'll do this. Choose wisely. (laughs) Choose wisely. It's a beautiful place. And I say, that one? He said, wow, you're so smart. (laughs) Hercules, Hercules. Look at my baby. He's so smart. Like, Come on, God, that's a no-brainer, really. But that's a father. Don't you do that with your kids? Choose wisely. (laughs) Here's the key. We're looking at a God, and we're serving a God. Are you listening to me? You sure? Of ease. You didn't receive that because I would have felt it. I would have felt it go out of me like virtue. We serve a God of ease. Listen, even if, you do, even if your flesh and everything in you is fighting against and all your religious foundation is fighting it, just forcefully take that. Amen. Just force. We just saw it in the scripture. And, and, and we and quoted the scripture Jesus said. Take my yoke and learn of me, for my yoke is easy. Jesus said, same thing this is saying here. Learn of me, just do what I do, and it's easy. Why was it easy for Jesus? I only say what I hear the Father saying. I only do what I see the Father doing. He let the Father lead him in the way he should choose, and he chose. Right. So you're saying I'm never going to make a mistake again? I guarantee you will, because you still have a flesh. But the more you get it under subjection, the less mistakes you're going to make. So you saying I could get to the place in life that, okay, listen, I'm not here to argue with you against you wanting to be there. Stay there. There's things that God said in the Bible that me and have to look at and go, your word says you don't lie. So there needs to be, it got to be true. But there's no way in my mind I can perceive this as a truth. I'm going to give you one verse. Ready? If you'll bear witness, stick a hand up. Not yet. I mean, after I say it. Thank you for your obedience. That was a test run. Do it again. Everybody stick your hand up. Stick your hand up. Good, good, perfect. So now, 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 that, now that we know how to do it, we've all been tested. This was the verse that did that to me. Tell me if it did it to you. Be ye holy, for I am holy. None of you had a problem with that verse? You telling me to be holy like you? Jesus said, be ye holy, for I am holy. I'm like, "Uh but you Jesus, though. You didn't put your hand up. Nobody, Nobody had that question but me? 
Hold up. Nobody, so to people that didn't put your hand up, you had never had that struggle. You're like, oh, yeah, I could be holy just like Jesus. All the people that said I could be holy just like Jesus, stand up. I want to meet you. I'm going to take lessons from you. I'm going to sit down and put you up here. Because I looked at that and said, that, yeah, yeah. That's, that's just a figure of speech. <laughs> and one day God said to me, no, it's not. It's in my word. If I'm telling you, you can. And that sent me on a quest. And I was trying to figure out how to do something spiritual in the natural. I start trying to behave. I start, start trying to be what I thought holy was and what church told me holy was. And you know what I found out during that season of my life? I sinned worse than any time before. I did, right. Well, um, Romans 7, the thing I would not do, that's the thing I do. And the thing that I want to do, that's the thing. I, I'm like, that. I'm sinning more now than I was before I saw this verse. I was fornicating my brains out. Like, oh, my goodness, I was doing better before I read that. And it hit me. God said, you, 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 you can't make your flesh be something spiritual. Holiness is a place in the realm of the spirit. And then it spills over into your flesh and into your life around you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. You going about this wrong. You trying to behave. I did not say behave holy for I am holy. I said be ye. Let me tell you what be ye means. Ready? I think Nike stole it from the Bible. Just do it. It just receive it. Just accept it. It's a place of being. You're a human being, not a human doing. You're a being. Be it. This is who you are. That's like God saying to me, be a man. And I'm like, oh, Lord, you got to show me how to do that. Mm. He's like, how were you born? Just be it. Just be it. Just be it. So when he said, be holy, he said, no, I've called you holy. Christ died for you. Just receive it. Just be it. Stop trying to be it. Just be it. But there are days I have there. Okay, that has nothing to do with it. We're not talking about how your flesh acted today. We're telling you to be. There's times you got mad, lost your temper, start cussing and acting like an animal. You didn't become an animal. You just acted like one. You just acted like one. But if you know who you were and you were just being that, that personality would change. Amen. Jackie, when I say stuff that applies to him, stop staring at him like that. She just turned and looked right at him like, now you're going to let me know he was cussing and acting a fool the other day, just telling on the brother. Just, just keep looking at me. Don't look at him. You know what I'm saying? She just, she, she, she literally turned the whole body went. <laughs> Missing the whole point. <laughs> right, that's yours. Judge not that you be not judged. Leave him, leave him alone. I love this house, man. <laughs> so funny. You should have seen that. She turned her whole body. <laughs> All right, buddy, that means you need to stop doing that now. All right, Jesus' name. Shama la 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 la. Be free. Say, I am holy. Not because of me, but because of what he did. It's easy to win when you know the prize is already yours. It's easy to win. Are you getting something today? Yes. Are you getting something today? Yes. Are you getting something today? Yes. You're not trying to be righteous. You've been made righteous. And once you understand that that's yours, you can live out of it. As long as you're trying to obtain it, it always eludes you. Let me wrap this up. 
I, I, I don't want to go on to, to the next verses because I don't want to, it's like we're almost getting like a verse or two a week. <laughs> I don't want to mess this up. The secrets of the Lord. Let me just deal with that. I, I got enough time to cover that. I said I'll, 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 I'll. I, said I was going to wait till next week. So he said he's going to reveal to her his secrets. Now, look at me. By a show of hands, how many of you would say, not to me, but to God, yeah, I want to know all your secrets. I would love to know them. By a show of hands. Okay, he just said, here's a way to get them. Now, what are the secrets of the Lord then? What is the definition of knowing God's secrets? Look at me, look at me. Pay close attention to what I'm about to say. Knowing God's secrets, some of you are right here in this room, I felt in my spirit, was like, yeah, I want to know God's secrets for my life. You're so limited. I want to know his secrets to everything. I want to know his secrets to my life, your life. And that's why you get text messages from me and like, I needed that. Oh, my God, how did you know? But I know you know. And I'm like, I don't know what it is, but I just knew. I felt you and I said I felt you were going through something and I shot you a text. I've done that to so many times to so many of you all. And you're, or you get that call, Mike, and you go like, oh, my dude. The right? The time. Right, because I, I'm, I'm before my face and God will say, Stop what you're doing, send that text, and then go back to what you're doing. And I'll do it. So God had you on my heart clearly this week, Miss Winnie, because you was getting text messages. Right. And God was saying, encourage her just by showing her some love. Send her this word. Bless her heart. Uh, to me, I don't know where you are at that moment exactly, but I know just one word sometime, one, just one, hey, it's going, it's, going, you know, it's going to be okay. I love my family. Now, I'm grateful that I have a small family that I don't have to try to send a text to 5,000 people. <laughs> he said we would know his secrets. And I wanted to know, by definition, what that meant. So watch this. The word in Hebrew is the word sold, S-O-D-E, sold, sowed, however you want to pronounce it. It's from a session or a company. Now, by implication, intimacy, consultation, a secret assembly, a council, an inward secret or council is the initial breakdown. Then it goes to, you know his counsel, his assembly. Don't sleep on that. When God got together with his counsel, I need you to listen close to me. Listen close to me. And he said, and he said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. Angels weren't at that meeting. Just Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He's saying that you get access to that assembly, that council. You get to sit around that table when he makes that next decision. Nah, can that really be? Well, let's see. There's a place in the Old Testament. Hmm. You may remember this story where God's sitting around a council table with his council of three. And he says, let's destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because they're wicked. And then one of the members of the council said, should we do this without first consulting our friend? Abraham had access to the council. Should we do this without first getting his input? When I saw that, I was like, I want that. I said that. See, my life is filled of moments like that where I would see things in the scripture as a baby Christian. It may have taken a while for me to get it right, but I said, I want that. So you know why you'll get those calls and text messages? I have access to the council. I 
I have access to the council. And you know what's, what's cool about that? Ready? I'm about to mess with you. I'm going to say it one more time. I have access to the council. See, see, see who, Lindsay got it. She's the only one who got it. Let's try it again. I have access to the council. You all said amen to me. You agreed with me, but didn't take it for yourselves. I didn't get here because God just said I'm better than you. Well, he may have said that, but my point is, <laughs> I didn't get there because somebody else said it. I didn't get there because somebody prophesied on me. Oh, and you will have access to the council. I saw it in the word. And I said, if it's there, I can have it. When I saw the thing where Abraham said, I don't want the, nothing but the food my men ate. Let no man say they made me rich, but almighty God. I said, yes. If you're calling me to preach, I don't ever want to be in a situation where anybody can say I'm getting rich off the church. I want it to be, and I've gone places and preach, and they try to take an offer, and I say, no, thank you. Or they give it to me, and I turn around and put it right back in the bucket. You don't want to take our offer? And I did take it. Now I seeded it back. I don't ever want you to think I need to come in and preach for your money. I don't need to. Amen. I claim that because I saw that in Abraham. I claim that you be the head and only and not the tail. I said, I don't want to have to work for anybody ever again in my life, God. That was my claim. And here we are, like almost 25 years in, I have not had to work. My wife hasn't had to work for nobody. Everything that he tells me to do that I follow, he blesses. As long as I follow. Let's just keep it real. There's things God called me to do and he blessed it. And the moment that I let somebody else in my own mind shift the plan, it went right down the drain. Only got a few minutes left, so we're going to end it on this. So first is council or assembly. And then it says a familiar conversation. This is God letting you into his secrets. I want to make sure you understand this. So when people come to me and say, well, you know, the Bible says, I'm like, that ain't a familiar conversation. I know that ain't in the Bible, and I know it don't say that, and it don't sound nothing like that. Because I've had people say things to me, well, you know the way? I'm like, no, I know it don't say that. Why? Because it don't sound like my daddy. Even if the Bible says it, you're twisting the way it's being said because God would never speak in the tone that you're speaking. That harsh, mean, <clears throat> okay, you, you are not, that, that's, a, that's a little demon, that's a little gremlin spirit. That, that's not God, because God don't talk like that. God's words for proof and edification and, and spiritual enhancement of the body of Christ, he said it every word. So, that's the first word, right? You're part of the council and the assembly, and it's a familiar conversation. Don't you want to be familiar with God? The last one I'm going to cover today. No, I'm going to stop. I think because we got only one minute left. So let's just, let's just end it right there. This is big. This is big today. This is big. This is big. He'll guide you in your choices. And he'll guide you by a way of giving you access to his secrets. The counsel of his directions available to you. And he wants you to sit at the table as a familiar friend. Why is that huge? And I may go a few minutes over my time, but not much. But listen to me. Are you listening? There's a thing that's referred to in the Bible called familiar spirits. They'll call sorcerers, or people who do sorcery, they say them and their familiars. These are demons that live with them and function through them and function with them and operate through them. 
there are magi magicians, so-called magicians out there that do feats of magic uh, that they have familiars. And they'll talk to their familiars during the course of their performances so they can hear things. Um, a lot of times, the ones that are psychic, that are really hearing, they hear through familiars. A lot of people that stand up in front of churches and say they're prophets, a lot of times they just focus through familiars. Spirits. Everything that Satan does and every demon that he sends forward to do a job is a shabby replica of God and how God works. God is saying, I want you to be familiar and have a familiar relationship with my spirit and my counsel. And people who can't find that relationship will settle for familiar spirits with demons. We wake up to familiar voices every morning, and a lot of them are not God. That voice that has told you all your life that you're a failure and you're never going to be but this high, it's a familiar When you start to hear this voice, that voice will go away. When you start to get in tune to this voice and what this voice sounds like, don't pray not to hear that. Like I said last week, don't focus on the way you're short. Focus on your strengths and let your strengths overshadow your weakness and overpower your weaknesses. There's no scripture that tells you to pray that you don't hear the voice of the enemy. It's not one. And first of all, it's not wise. He said, my sheep know my voice and the voice of a stranger they will not follow. He did not say he will not hear. But they know the difference from one to the other and they know what to follow. So I submit this to, the, to you today as my closing point. Being guided in the way we should choose is not always winding up at a door saying, should I take this or should I take that or should I take this? I don't know, God, help me, Lord. Help me decide, Jesus, help me, Lord. But being in the council that before you even get on the road to the doors, you know which door you're going to. Amen. Not saying that I've achieved it all, but this one thing I do. For getting that which is behind me, I press forward. I tell you what, I'm better at it than a lot of people I know. And I'll wait. And people say, you should do this. You know, it's an idea, and you should do this, and you should do that, and you should do this. And I sit there and go, mm -hmm. that's a good point. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. So here's what we're doing. We're doing this, and we're doing that, and that's a good idea, but no, we're not doing that. God made that mistake with the last business. Letting everybody say, you could do this, you could do that, you could do it this, or maybe you should try it this way, you should do it this way, this, that way. And, and, and all of a sudden, I didn't even hear the counsel of God anymore because everybody else's counsel was clouding God's voice out. So this time I'm being very careful. So I sit in the meetings now and I go, uh-huh. Hmm. We'll put a pin in that. But this is what we're doing. Not hostile, not anything. It sounds great. Good. The day that God tells me you're the visionary, we're going to do everything you say. But since I am now, this is what we're doing. Or that speaks to somebody.